for say 10, 15 days also. Then they try to use it for um, various things, in orchard situation or even field crop situation, they try to use it. In various ways, they apply it uh, as a soil application with, with irrigation water or some people they spray uh, by using a normal sprayer. Some people they use it in a drip also. So different methods they have used. Now this was noticed during one of my extensive survey that I have conducted throughout the state. All the districts I surveyed and uh, this was noticed. Most about 30 to 40 percent of the farmers, organic farmers. Because I was specifically uh, surveying organic farmers. So they were using this. And now I am in the process of standardizing this methodology, farmers methodology and adding uh, say a scientific investigation to that actually. I am trying to provide uh, the testimony uh, of uh, microbial population in this Islam and how much of uh, microbial culture that we are adding by, by applying this Islam all such things I am trying to do. With reference to this project, what I thought uh, when I was talking to Vishwanath Instead of cat urine, can we use human to prepare what we call it as jivamrata? Maybe there is there are differences in terms of nutrients. But essentially I am looking at jivamrata not as a source of nitrogen. Okay, it may add to some extent some nitrogen is there. In, in our case we have already made analysis. It is varying between 2.28 to 2.35% nitrogen. And the phosphorus uh, potassium are very little, in fact 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.06 like that. Well, nutrients are certainly less. Even in case of human urine, it may be a little more nitrogen, it's different. Nitrogen. But what I am trying to talk about is, after incubation, it is actually going to be a, a concentrated form of a bio inoculant because it has got, a, we have got a proof already, we made a lot of microbial analysis on this. In fact, we have got the bacterial count is almost increased from six to eight times of the original because of this incubation. You know very well, incubation under ambient room temperature can favor the growth of microbes mainly because we have provided carbohydrate in the form of jathri, we have provided nitrogen in the form of pulse flow. So ideal situation to grow microbes in that country can make this jivamrata as a rich source of beneficial bacteria. So that is what we have observed. Application of jivamrata under farmer situation has really increase the microbial activity in a soil in such a, such a way that after three years or four years of continuous application of geomata, in fact, the organic carbon status is as high as 1.2, 1.4, 1.5, whereas a normal cultivated soil only with fertilizer, our figures are 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So organic carbon status is an indicator of microbial activity. And we have also seen that application of Jivamrata along with other organic farming practices, the fertility, soil fertility in terms of available nitrogen, in terms of available potassium, in fact it's very high. So application of Jivamrata can really take care of the objectives of a sustaining a fertility. In fact sustainability is better achieved by various organic farming practices but one of the practices could be this Jivamrata also. Now, if we are able to use human urine to prepare this, this is a totally new angle. As it is, the people who have been using Jivamrata have got one blind belief. I can say blind belief. Because they have been taught and tutored to think that only local cow's urine is the best for Jivamrata. But we found no reason to believe this. That's why I collected the uh, urine from all types of, uh, say uh, we have collected from bullock, I have collected from crossbred cow, I have collected from other types of cattle. Because large population of uh, cattle was in these three, four categories. 
and in fact we have found that crossbred cow as well as ox is also equally efficient as our desi cow. So we have no reason to believe that desi cow is the only one so If we are able to replace this urine by human urine, certainly we are trying to develop some new technology which can really help in propagating the idea of using human urine in rural areas. In rural areas, right now whatever efforts we are making, it's only the urban area, ECOSA and all such things. But in rural areas, where collection of human urine is really, has not been done at all, if we are able to show that this has got a lot of nutrient value, a lot of uh, uh, other beneficial things, I think it can, it can add a new dimension to use of anthropological waste. So with that idea, we have tried to uh, include one experiment in the proposed project, wherein standardization of preparing Zilomrata by using human And of course, applying it to, to different crops and observation, observing the yield as well as the microbial build. The idea here is very, very clear. I told Vishwanath also that we are, we don't have an illusion or vision that Jivamrata is the solution for everything. That is not my contention at all. My contention is that Jivamrata can go as an important organic farming practice along with others. Along with others. So if we are able to achieve this, in fact, uh, uh, the microbial count that we, are ex we can expect, say, after span of one year, two years, it is really going to be uh, uh, wonderful. In fact, one of my PG students who worked on Zivamrata in Paddy under GK Vigil conditions, in a span of three months period, by five times application of Zivamrata, the bacterial count was increased by almost three times. Three times. So, there is a, a new avenue which is opening. And ultimately, we should know very clearly that the sustainable fertility of a soil is basically dependent on the microbial activity. If we are able to proliferate, if we are able to activate more microbial activity, really, it is going to act to the system. So that is the dimension that we are trying. No. Also, your definition of sustainable agriculture was very striking. That yes, yes. In fact, um, we have been uh, trying to define sustainability in different ways. Uh, but when we talk of sustainability of fertility, in fact, the biological basis of sustaining the fertility is to improve the microbial activity. Because we say organic farming leads to sustainability. But what is organic farming? Organic farming, people have defined it in different ways. But basically organic farming is farming with organisms. That's why it's called as organic. If we are able to improve the biological activity of soil, if we are able to improve the bacterial count or any beneficial organisms in the soil. It automatically sustains the fertility. So sustainability is directly linked to the microbial activity and we are trying to add a culture which is rich in beneficial bacteria. Obviously this 